our question is war and men's game. So we're going to be introducing to you two films that we are going to be analyzing. Gladiator, which was released in 2000, and um, Troy, which was released in 2004. Our aim of this PowerPoint is to analyze how courage and cowardice are presented in these two short, in these two films. And it's a sword and sandal ethics. We'll explain to you what it is. And um, we, we showed some reviews and scripts. So that will be our text. It is a type of 20th century film genre, firstly inspired by the movie Ben-Hur, um, which continued to influence classics like Spartacus and Conan the Barbarian. Over time, though, it lost its popularity in Hollywood, but was again revived by the release of Gladiator. This genre depicts courageous, strong, masculine heroes in ancient times, where heroism was equivalent to success. So we have an example here of And um, the director is Ridley Scott, and the main character is Russell Crowe, and he plays Gladiator or Maximus. And um, well, he's very buff, and he shows a lot of masculinity and courage. He is shown he is he's regarded as a hero in the film. And I'll be just showing some of the reviews as you have in the sheet. Um, if there's a soft spot in your heart for the sword and sandal epic. And from the star rating, I think you can guess where I stand. Then you'll swoon, swoon with giddy delight over Gladiator, a sweaty, stylish hump fest that takes you back to the days of Benham, Spartacus, and the so recently departed Steve Reeves. From his biceps to his gluteus, Maximus is Maximus. This Roman general turned slave turned Gladiator hasn't a shred of humor, but then he doesn't have time for idle nonsense when he's sleeping, lopping off present day. The head lopping is apparently his signature, like the mark of the rest. So first of all, this review, I think, is very strong because it relates to um, the sword and sandal epic, which, as we just showed you, is a very classical genre of um, ancient fighting film. And it has, it mentions, it sort of advertises the film as well because it says it has a good star rating. It's liked by pretty much everybody. Um, it has quite stereotypical and um, superficial describing words such as sweaty, stylish, hunk fest, and it's quite um, superficial, unlike the film. Hunk fest is, it shows a lot of um, masculinity in its word itself, because hunk is like very strong and buff, and then it is a lot fest. It relates to Ben-Hur, which is a classic, and it also relates to the biceps and gluteus, and actually gluteus is like the butt muscle, and um, there's a maximus gluteus and a minimus gluteus, so it relates to that film. Uh, <laughs> and it has quite a humoristic language to it as well. So. The next one is Glorious, a colossus of rousing action and ferocious fun. It's very simple, clear, and down to the point. You know, you can sit, you can already imagine the whole movie in just one line. And ferocious fun is alliteration, and the F sound is actually very fierce and um, ferocious. It's very forceful, so it gives a lot of force to the sentence. And Colossus is actually sounds like the Colosseum, which also relates to Roman times, and um, it means large and important. So again. Then the third and last one is um, in Hollywood, like the realms of rock music and fashion as well, if you wait long enough, you'll see that every expired trend resuscitated for yet another go. Case in point, this month is Gladiator, director Ridley Scott's ambitious Roman mega spectacle, which revives the old sword and sandal genre of the 50s and 60s. So again, relates to the sword and sandal epic. 
and um, it's said that the movie is ambitious and brings back this classical trend. We'll be, now we have to watch the clip. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. says that he threatens Commodus by saying he'll have revenge on him in whatever way. So he'll, or Commodus will suffer from his living. And Commodus, as you can see, he turns away. He, he's extremely uh, embarrassed, first of all, fearful, and he doesn't know what to do. He had, I don't know if you saw in the video, but he was hesitating to see, oh no, the crowds saying live and I want you to die. And then, yeah, here's a crowd saying, live, 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 as you saw in the film. So he gained, he gained the power of the audience, which is even more powerful than the emperor. Mm. Well, that's Rome, so. Yeah. Now I'll be um, just comparing the two main characters in this scene. So Commodus, he is, as you can see, he's very frail. He's pale. He, He's, he stands, first of all, much more insecurely, sort of like crouching, not very open, not very stable. He's insecure because he didn't make his own choice from what he wanted. 
Um, he's, he's not really loved by the women. And he's, he's, he wants to be an idol, like an idolizing hero for Roman, but actually he's just a loser. And Maximus, on the other hand, uh, stands very, with a very um, open and secure, stable posture with his chest out, his arms inside, legs apart. This again shows much more dominance and courage. So this do dominates Commodus, especially when he walks up to him. It's sort of like Commodus is getting smaller and Maximus is getting bigger. And um, Maximus, actually, before this scene, just before, he wants to kill the emperor, so he takes some, uh, a knife on from the floor and he would kill Commodus just when he's facing him. But actually, then Commodus, uh, Maximus sees the nephew and he doesn't do it because he doesn't want to hurt the nephew right in front of him. So that shows that he's merciful and actually caring, so that again gives a masculine um, side, but it's different. But it's different. His deep voice really emphasizes his dominance and courage. Those are the main points. Now we're going to go on to your side. Okay, so Troy was released in 2004 and was directed by Wolfgang Pearson. It is the most recent make of Homer's story, Iliad, and it includes Brad Pitt, Eric Bana, Orlando Bloom, and other celebrities. It is set during the Bronze Age, and it's about the forbidden love story of Helen and Paris which resulted into a violent war between the Greeks, led by the mighty Achilles, and the Trojans, led by their brave prince Hector, so it's about the downfall of Troy. Um, the critics, compared to Gladiator, and Troy didn't do it as well. There were several negative reviews when it first came out. Um, we have here, it says, Troy yearns to be an epic for the ages, something along the lines of 2000's Gladiator, but it is more reminiscent of a cheesy Harlequin romance that just so happens to have lots of big battle scenes and expensive effects. So it is compared to Gladiator, therefore we see which one is the better of the two. And it's because they put so much effort, time, and money in it, it didn't actually do what it was trying to achieve. Um, the next preview says there is a lot of guts and glory here, but no heart. Paris is a spoiled brat who lacks courage and lets less, not love, rule his actions. So this criticism is like directed intentionally towards the main character of Paris because as we're going to see in a scene, um, he's very cowardly. And the next one. Um, this review is similar to the first one. So this is a big, expensive, intermittently campy example of Hollywood homerism, which is desperate to be regarded as a classic. It isn't so good, but it isn't so bad either. So kind of on both sides here, but you can see that it's an amateur type of film more than anything else. There was another critic um, that stated how unlikely it was for people to rush to the movies to see Brad Pitt in a skirt when the news was covered with violent stories. This um, critic could have been referring to the massacre of 900 people in Nigeria the day before the movie's release, so it could have been that there was too much blood on screens. Now we're going to see how Paris prepared. Make him swing and miss, he'll tire. Brother, 